Hey guys, how are you doing? Scott from Scott's Bass Lessons again. And I've got some wicked news for you. So first of all, this is episode five of Ask Scott. So we're going to be ask, answering, or I'm going to be answering some questions in this video, um, ranging from, you know, um, how to get a good tone through to different things about gear and things like that. So stay tuned for that. But first of all, two bits of news for you. The first thing is regarding bass riff of the week. Um, over the Christmas holidays, I watched a ton of box sets. I got stuck into games of, Game of Thrones. I re-watched um, Breaking Bad. And my wife and I were talking about why they were so, so cool. And we kind of figured, obviously, they're really well made. But it's because they're in seasons and we really look forward to that next season coming out. So what I thought would be cool is instead of just doing this base for the week every week, so it's kind of monotonous and people kind of get worn out, we thought it'd be cooler to do it in seasons. So, you know, we'll see if it works. So essentially, we've done up to base for the week number 18, I think. So now we're going to have a break for a month or so, and then we'll go into season two. So might be a cool idea, might be a terrible idea, but I think, I think it's quite a cool idea. Anyway, let me know in the comments below what you think. And also, really, really important news, at the end of this month, okay, so we're in January 2015, 2015, um, at the end of January 2015, I'm releasing a brand new course, um, and this course is all to do with how to play chords. <laughs> on the bass okay it's um one of the it's one of the questions i, I get asked most uh, you might have heard some of the singles that i've done over the last few months coming up to christmas i've released some solo bass singles um, so all the information on how i put stuff like that together will be in there it's essentially um like a definitive guide type of thing i'm going to take you through everything that um, you need to know when it comes to creating chords on bass. In fact, I think that we're, we're going to top the six hour mark on this course. So it's going to be over six hours of um, video just on playing chords on bass. Now, it's getting released, I think, in the last week of January. And anybody that um, jumps into the academy, that joins the SBL Academy, within that week is going to get some super, super special bonuses, okay? And so if you join the SBL Academy, you know, in February, you won't get these bonuses. These bonuses are specifically to do with that course, with the chords course, okay? So if you want to know, if you want to get on the early bird list, so you find out as soon as the chords course is released. I'm going to put a link below this video. It will say something like, get on the early bird list here. Click that link and then shoot through, follow the instructions just so your email is on the, on the early bird list and I can notify you as soon as it gets released. Because again, if you join within the first seven days of the chords course being released, you're going to get some super sexy bonuses. Um, I'm going to be doing some like really exclusive live training where I'm going to get on the, um, we're going to be doing some sort of like group chats and all that kind of thing. So make sure you get on the early bird list. So that's the chord course and it's coming at the end of this month. Um, so now, episode five of Ask Scott. Let's get on with it. How big of a role does technique play in your tone, Scott? And how about gear? Okay, so like your technique has a huge, huge part to do with your sound on the bass. And I learned this the hard way. Um, years ago, how many years ago would it be? Maybe, yeah, years ago, actually, like 13, 14 years ago, I was lucky enough to go and get a lesson from my favorite bass player ever. Um, the reason why I started playing bass, I heard this bass solo it was by a guy called Schoolish Ferenson, who is an Icelandic guy who, at the time... Um, like 13, 14 years ago, was living in New York, and I got to go and have a lesson with him. Now, bear in mind that I'd been listening to Schooley for years, and this this bass that he played, I'd been listening to it for years. Um, I used to dream about this bass, and and there I found myself in his apartment getting a lesson, and there the bass is. So it got to the end of the lesson, and Schooley was like, "So you know, it's the end of the lesson. Is there anything else you want to do? You know, any questions you have?" And I was like, yeah, can I play your bass? Because I've been listening to this, like Schoolie's tone is just mind blowing. Even now, as I listen to it, it's just beautiful. So he was like, yeah, sure. So he passed me the bass, I plugged it in and started playing. 
It didn't sound anything like him. It didn't sound anything like what I'd been listening to the record. It just sounded like me. And that was my short, sharp shock into how, you know, just each person's tone, how you play the bass, is completely individual to you. And yeah, the stuff that you can, you know, bear, you know, the stuff you can do to bring that out, you can um, be aware of kind of playing down the bridge. It's going to give you a a different tone to if you're playing around the neck you can play lightly you can play you know dig in a bit more that mark is kind of sounds very different to you know so yeah technique has a huge you know a huge part to do with what you sound like and your own physiology as well how your you know how your fingers are made but obviously you can't do much about your physiology but what you can do is experiment with different techniques um where you're plucking how you're fretting the note are you using vibrato all that kind of thing gives you your overall tone and yeah obviously gear gives you your you know it does give you your tone as well. I'm playing jazz bass here or a jazz bass type instrument. If I was playing a P bass, it would sound completely different. And I'd also play it completely differently as well, which is another conversation completely. I really um, um really interested in how an instrument makes you play. I play this bass completely differently to how I play my P bass. And I play my P bass completely differently to how I play, say, you know, uh, my five string with a high C. It's it's just a really interesting, um, interesting topic. So thanks for the question, Matt. Do you have any hand stretches and warm ups before practicing and performing, especially with the left hand? Yeah, I do have some stretches that I do. Um, I've talked about this in the uh, in the technique course within the SBL Academy. So if you haven't checked out Scott's Bass Lessons Academy, check that out. I've got a lot of stretching exercises in there. Um, one thing I do is just, you know, like before I play a gig, I make sure that I sit down with the instrument and just, you know, play some simple lines like... You know, just play it. Just play, you know, some chromatic exercises, maybe. That kind of thing before you get on the gig and start, you know, sort of like tearing it up. Um, other stuff that I do is just like gentle bending of the wrist here. I'm, I'm like, I normally keep my arm straight to keep the tendon straight, and then I just push back slightly on the arm and then both arms, and I try and just sort of, you know, warm the hands up as well before I play. Nothing too, you know, nothing sort of like miraculously weird or anything like that. <sighs> Yoga moves or, you know, anything like that. Um, just kind of sort of like get the hands warmed up before you grab your base and, and, and start going for it. So yeah, I do have some stretches just like that, but nothing, you know, too over the, over the top or weird. Hey Scott, what tips would you have for someone who is thinking about starting to teach the bass? Okay, that is a huge question. It's a really big question. So first of all, if you're thinking about teaching the bass, just first off, you know, just make sure that you have a good idea of what you're doing um, on a knowledge. You know, you don't want to be passing on knowledge that's wrong or anything like that. I know that sounds stupid, but you know, I've had students come to me and worked with me in the past and they've been told some crazy stuff. So just as a sort of like starting off point, let's say, make sure that you know kind of like, you know, your apples and your oranges and you know what you're talking about. Um, secondly, if you are thinking about getting into to education and teaching bass, um, it's really good to know, you know, how to use online media now instead of kind of going to your local news agents and put in a um an advertisement on the wall and hoping that some you know somebody of the thousands of people that go in that news agent might want to play bass you know it's just sort of like that's kind of sort of like just a random way that people used to advertise obviously now there's facebook there's twitter there's all these social media channels which are amazing for advertising your services if you want to be 
um, a base teacher or an educator of any type, um, it's a huge subject. So what I would say is just make sure that you know what you're doing and then definitely look into social media as a way to advertise your services as well. And a question to you guys, if you would like me to do more, like maybe not more lessons because I've done none, but some lessons about how to, you know, music, um, like advertising via social media. Like I'm not sure if you know, but obviously I've got like, like nearly 200,000 subscribers coming up to, like I think we're 175 or something, 180,000 on YouTube. And I think over 170,000 likes on Facebook as well. So I know kind of like what I'm doing when it comes to social media and on YouTube and things like that. If you'd like me to put some lessons together on how to use those platforms to um, advertise, if you're a bass teacher or a piano teacher or a guitar teacher or anything like that, is that something you're interested in? You know, let me know in the comments below. Do you want me to do a couple of lessons on, you know, showing you how to get to grips with um, getting your videos viewed on YouTube and Facebook likes and things like that? Let me know in the comments. I'm a beginner and would like a recommendation on a decent quality bass amp in the 10 to 12 inch range. Okay, bass amps, 10 to 12 inch speakers, right? Um, I'm relatively inexperienced when it comes to amps, as in I've used a lot of the same brand. <clears throat> so I can tell you what I really like um, and what I think you should check out. Um, as far as, like I use Van der Clay. They're a great, great cabinet. They're quite expensive though. They're on the sort of like top end. So if you're just starting out, it's going to be out of your price range. I really like Mark Bass. I've used a lot of Mark, but Mark Bass cabinets. They do great tiny cabinets that are amazing. 10 inch combos and things like that. Super powerful. So definitely check those out. Um, what else have I used? I've used a few EBS things. They've been really nice. Combos and stuff like that. Like you need to really decide whether you're going to go the combo route or are you going to go the separate cab and head route. So if you go the combo route, it's great because it's portable. Um, especially if you like, you go something like Mark Bass or something like that, because they're really light. Throw them in the car, get to the gig, right? Um, and you don't have to sort of like mess around with leads, plugging anything in. Not that it's that much of a sort of like hassle, but you know, it helps. I'm super lazy, right? Um, a separate head and 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 cabinet. They're cool because if you want to change one, you can. So if you want to change a cabinet or you want to add more power to it, you can add more cabinets and things like that. And if you don't like the head or forever, you know, you want to change it and try out something new, you can do. So you don't have to change your entire, your whole rig. You just have to, you know, you can change 50% of it. So I'd try and sort of like for you, I'd try and nail down whether you want a combo or you want a separate head and cabinet and then look at, you know, stuff like Mark Bass, look at, you know, Van der Klee are great, but very, like more expensive, I would say, than Mark Bass. And if you're just starting out, Mark Bass, EBS, um, Heart Key Kickbacks, that was like ages ago. They had a, an amp called the Heart Key Kickback, which was great, but I haven't tried one in years. But thanks for the question anyway. Would you say long fingers, like the ones you have, and large hands give you a distinct advantage over someone with small or normal size hands? This is a tough question because... I would say a little bit. <laughs> That's a bit wafty, right? A bit of a wafty answer. Um, I think it does initially give you, because, you know, it's easy for me to stretch. It's easy for me to stretch, like doing arpeggios that have got that quite a big stretch in it, you know. But I've got friends that have got small hands and they're absolutely tearing it up. I've also seen videos on YouTube of like 14 year olds absolutely tearing it up. So I think initially right off the bat, you may think it gives you an advantage, but it actually doesn't when you get your technique sorted out. Um, and it's to do with shifting. So for instance, if I was playing an arpeggio like this, let's do it right down here so it's B flat, B flat major arpeggio. Like, yes, I could do this. So I'm stretching between the first and the fifth fret there. But I actually wouldn't do that in, in real life. I wouldn't, I'd shift like this. So from the B flat to the D, that's the movement. 
So, and, and I can hold my hands really close together. So, and that's because I've worked on my technique of shifting. So, to practice this, just take two notes like B flat and D. So, the first two notes of a B flat major arpeggio, and just practice going between them. But you want you no know daylight between the notes. It's not this. It's. The distance between the notes is just like microscopic. You can't hear it. Sounds exactly the same when I do this. And then practice those bigger arpeggios using that kind of shifting technique. You could do it like this. Like I'm not using any big stretches there with my left hand. Still, the arpeggio sounds super smooth. Again, let's do that. Notice how there's hardly, well, there's no stretch. Okay. I'm using correct shifting to do that and I've really worked on um, shifting between the notes to get that um, get that smooth attack you know so there's no daylight between the notes and I, and I got to this I started doing this because I was watching um, some friends of mine specifically a guy called Zoltan Dekany if you're watching Zoltan um, Zoltan's got tiny hands He's got burning technique. He's like, you know, this guy is serious. And, and he can, sh you know, he can shift around the bass like anybody, like super fast. Yet he's got like small hands. And I was like, oh, how's he doing that? He seems to be using loads less energy than I am. Like, oh, you know, crazy spider fingers. So um, I looked at guys like that and thought, okay, well, they're doing it. And they've got small hands. How are they doing it? Because I want to use less energy in my bass playing as well and then just trying to incorporate those techniques into my playing and essentially you can do exactly the same if you've got small hands don't worry about it it's just about getting the shifting down between notes and as soon as you get that down it'll sound mega cheers for the question man okay guys so thanks again for watching this entire episode of ask scott if you're right here at the end you've watched the whole, the whole thing i hope you haven't fast forwarded um as i said at the beginning um, the Chords course is getting released into the Scots Bass Lessons Academy at the end of this month. Um, and if you get on the early bird list, there is some really, really cool live training that's going to be happening um, as soon as we release the, the course. But if, obviously, if you don't get in in that first week, you're going to miss that. Um, and other than that, shoot over to Scott's Bass Lessons. Remember, there's a ton of lessons over there that are completely free. And also, if you sign up, you get access to the toolkit that has things like the Bass Buyer's Guide, um, how to get gigs, you know, loads of cool stuff, and a free play-along library as well. So uh, hopefully, I'll see you over at scottsbasslessons.com. Take it easy, and I'll see you in the shed.